The tale of the Mary Celeste remains one of the most enduring mysteries of the sea. Her story begins with her construction in 1861 at Spencer's Island, Nova Scotia, Canada, where she was originally named the Amazon. She was a brigantine, a two-masted sailing ship with a square-rigged foremast and a fore-and-aft rigged mainmast. Her early years were marked by misfortune. Her first captain fell ill and died shortly after her maiden voyage, and she suffered damage in several accidents, including running aground in Cow Bay, Cape Breton Island in 1867. In 1868, the ship was sold to American Richard W. Haynes, who renamed her the Mary Celeste. She underwent extensive repairs and modifications, changing hands several times until she was acquired by a consortium that included Captain Benjamin Spooner Briggs. It was under Captain Briggs that the Mary Celeste would embark on her fateful voyage. Captain Benjamin Spooner Briggs was a seasoned mariner born in Massachusetts in 1835. He came from a family with deep maritime roots. His father was a sea captain as well. Briggs was known for his sobriety, piety and dedication to his family, which is why he chose to bring his wife and daughter along on the fateful voyage. He had been married to Sarah Elizabeth Briggs since 1862, and they had two children, the eldest being left with his grandmother during the voyage. The crew consisted of eight men, including the first mate, Albert G. Richardson, who was also an experienced seaman and had sailed with Captain Briggs before. Richardson was considered trustworthy by Briggs, which is why he was chosen for the position despite his involvement in a recent altercation that led to a court case. Andrew Gilling, the second mate, was a capable sailor, but not much is known about his personal life, which was common for sailors of that era. The rest of the crew were typical of the merchant marine of the time. German brothers Volkert and Boy Lorenzen, Arian Martins, Gottlieb Goodschard, Edward William Head, and an American seaman named Orion. They were all considered to be experienced and competent sailors. The crew's backgrounds were diverse, reflecting the international nature of maritime life in the 19th century. They were skilled laborers, each with their own reasons for going to sea. On November 7, 1872, the Mary Celeste set sail from New York City bound for Genoa, Italy, laden with more than the 700 barrels of denatured alcohol. Aboard were Captain Briggs, his wife, their two-year-old daughter, and a crew of seven. The ship encountered harsh weather early in her journey, but nothing that the experienced Captain Briggs couldn't handle. The last entry in the ship's log, dated November 25th, placed her within sight of the Azores. It was on December 5th, 1872, that the Mary Celeste was discovered adrift by the British brig De Gratia, some 400 nautical miles from the Azores. The ship was in good seaworthy condition, with her cargo intact and personal belongings undisturbed. Yet there was no sign of Captain Briggs, his family or any of the crew. The only lifeboat was missing, and there was a significant amount of water in the hold, though not enough to pose a serious threat to the ship's buoyancy. The discovery of the abandoned Mary Celeste sparked a flurry of speculation and theories. An official inquiry by the British Admiralty in Gibraltar failed to determine a cause for the abandonment, finding no evidence of foul play. Over the years, numerous hypotheses have been proposed, ranging from mutiny and piracy to sea quakes, water spouts and even paranormal activity. One of the more plausible explanations involves the cargo of alcohol. It's possible that the fumes from the leaking barrels could have created an explosion risk, prompting Captain Briggs to order the ship abandoned. However, no evidence of an explosion was found, and the barrels were largely intact when the De Gratia crew boarded the vessel. Another theory suggests that a faulty chronometer or navigational error may have led the crew to believe they were closer to the dangerous reefs around the Azores than they actually were, causing them to abandon ship unnecessarily. Yet, the ship's position logged in the captain's slate, which was found on board, did not indicate any such error. Psychological factors have also been considered. The isolation of life at sea, 
coupled with the stress of the harsh weather conditions the Mary Celeste faced, could have induced a state of panic or mass hysteria among the crew, leading them to make a rash decision to abandon a perfectly sound vessel. The story of the Mary Celeste has been sensationalized in popular culture, most notably by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's fictional account J. Habakkuk Jepson's Statement, published in 1884. Doyle's tale of a survivor of a ghost ship called the Marie Celeste, a misspelling that has since become common, added to the law but also muddied the waters of fact and fiction. Despite the many theories and investigations, the mystery of why the Mary Celeste was abandoned remains unsolved. The fate of her crew and passengers is lost to history, leaving us with a haunting maritime enigma that continues to captivate the imagination of sailors, historians, and mystery enthusiasts alike. The story of the Mary Celeste is a reminder of the sea's vastness and the enduring human quest to understand the unexplainable. Her silent voyage across the Atlantic, devoid of life but full of potential clues, is a maritime puzzle that may never be fully pieced together. Yet it is this very lack of resolution that keeps the legend of the Mary Celeste alive in our collective consciousness, a ghost ship sailing through the annals of nautical lore. The historical records and accounts available up to my last update in 2021 do not indicate the discovery of any personal journals or letters from the crew of the Mary Celeste. The ship's logbook was found with the last entry made on November 25th stating that the Mary Celeste was off the coast of Santa Maria Island in the Azores. This logbook would have contained the official navigational details and daily entries required by maritime law, but it is not a personal journal. The absence of personal writings adds to the mystery of the Mary Celeste, as such documents could have provided insights into the crew's thoughts and experiences leading up to their disappearance. It's possible that if any personal journals or letters did exist, they may have been lost over time or were never found. The lack of these intimate accounts leaves historians and enthusiasts to speculate based on the evidence that is available, which primarily consists of official documents, testimonies from the salvage hearings and investigations conducted at the time. The search for answers about the Mary Celeste continues to this day and perhaps one day, new evidence will emerge that could shed light on the thoughts and final days of her crew. Until then, the fate of the crew and the reasons for their mysterious abandonment of the ship remain an enigma of the sea.